this session, which will be presented by Dr. Rose Kahn. Uh, if you see an envelope uh, on your table, you will find four pieces in an envelope. You have to form the letter T. The English letter. Can you see Thank you. The English letter T. The English alphabet T. Should I just give you the solution because of time? I'm so sorry to kill the, kill the 
curiosity and enthusiasm. This is the way it looks. Now if you can try it using the, looking at the solution over there. Yeah, but, that, but still this piece, you have to use, the rule is you have to use all the four pieces. So you put the central piece, number two piece, the Try to fix the number two first and then put the others around it. So that's how we are able to relate and 
the long term program is even to get employment. We have a kid by name Rohan. I'm just using the, uh, the name because you all wouldn't know the person. But Rohan has hearing difficulty and he is working as in, the, in one of the top five star restaurants here. He's employed, he's even driving his own car. He's got a license. He wears hearing aid, but he's able to be employed also. So these kind of kids do look forward for a friendship, do look forward for, so my students have actually learned sign language to get communicated well with this particular group of people. We have five to six kids with hearing aids. You will be amazed if they, if they dance in front of you, you wouldn't know that they have hearing problems. Because they, are, they, they, they dance very well, they are forming their own team and they are performing even with the Bollywood stars and you know some of the movie stars in, in the UAE also when they come to visit. So you see there is a lot of opportunities. Many people earlier those days, if you talk to parents who had special needs kids, they will say that they thought why me? That's what they had a question. Why should they have a special needs kid? And today uh, one of my friends who has an autistic kid, she says I thank God I have a kid like Rohan because I have learned to appreciate life. I have learned to look at life differently. So you see how much we can learn and impart also to the family. So I am not just looking at the individual, we can look at the whole family. And uh, the next thing that is very important for us to understand, this is just for us to know the history so that we will be able to relate well. Because Anthony Kennedy Shriver is the one who started the Paralympics, the Special Olympics. He is the one who started and he is the nephew of John F. Kennedy. So it, it's a big time program that's been done. You can use it in the school also. There are only three schools that are actually registered on the international website including EIS. Uh, but you can be a part of it. I think uh, Mukta from KHDA is the UAE Best Buddies Coordinator. So in case you would like to be a part of it. And uh, there's, there's lots that you can get from the internet. And uh, this is what, these are my students who are with the special needs kids. And the most important thing that we believe is making them feel good. Sometimes they may not understand the language, but making them feel good. Because we remember how people made us feel Good. We remember that. I'm sure about it, right? We remember all the good moments. We want to forget all the painful moments. So we see as a counselor also, we try to help our students to be, it, it is a therapeutic process in itself. So sometimes the kids who are very uh, misfit in the classroom, they do a lot of activities for me in the best buddies. They run around, they organize the barbecue parties for them. They say, please, I'll get somebody to sponsor you, you for certain activities. So we have a lot of kids who are coming up with sponsorship. We don't take money, but we use, if people can give them, give us, maybe provide the snacks or provide uh, provide the facility to use. And uh, these are some of the uh, time commitment that our students need to do. Once a year, we have this whole program for the whole year. Um, one, once a week they can contact a buddy, either through phone call or through email or through Facebook or you know nowadays kids are all, even especially kids have their own Facebook account so they would keep in touch with them. They, they can visit them twice a month. So they can call them over to their home during the weekend for a barbecue or even for a get together, family get together. They could even go for a cinema like if they are interested or even have football tournaments or basketball, they could do all those activities together based on their interests. And they, we organize as a school one outing per term. So we have group outing. Uh, if you look at, that was a barbecue that we had for the, that, that's our students and one of our parents also had come. So it's good that parents are also getting involved. Some of our parents are sponsoring. All these food items and everything is sponsored. If you see the next one over here, it's drumming for a cause. We call it drumming for a cause. It's in our school campus itself. Like that kid is uh, having drum syndrome. And so all the kids who are surrounded with the drums are, some of them are, like one is a special need and one is our student, the buddy. So they sit together, they interact, and they have, uh, this was a barbecue outing that we had. So you see that we have a lot of fun activity. I think everybody wants fun. And this is the long-term vision that we have. If you see the key word, it's friendship. Number one is friendship. Providing opportunities both our students and the special needs students. Like we have a lot of special needs schools, schools like Dubai Center for Special Needs. We have Rashid uh, Pijat Center for Center. We have uh, Alnur Center for Special Needs. So we have a number of centers. 
So we have a lot of special needs schools where you could tie up with the with the management over there and they'll be more than happy to have volunteers and, and have kids also come over. From census we had a couple of kids who are good in painting to come over to our school during an after school activity and actually our students interacted with them and did the painting together. So that's the way our kids and our kids love this program. I mean it's a very popular program which is an after school program in EIS. It also helps with the education part of it because uh, community, and, community and service is a part of our curriculum also. So there's another, another component to it because it will help them with the education. And also some of our kids have raised funds to educate some of the special needs kids because the fees are also quite uh, you know, steep here. Uh, there was a boy who was not able to make it to school for six years. And since two months, some of our students have been able to, you know, give some financial support, directly paying the fees so that this kid can go to the school because the parents have found a difference in this kid. So that's the way you could do without even involving any kind of, uh, uh, you know, funds or anything. And also it helps in leadership. Our kids can organize program. So it helps the kids to come up with a lot of ideas. So they start influencing. Leadership is influence. So how we can influence and, and reach out to the whole community. My long-term program is to bring the Paralympics here in the UAE. Hopefully it will happen, I don't know. Hopefully, and then also bring about a change. So we are the change agent and how we can bring about change. That is what we try to do. It's not just speaking about change, we actually become the change agent. Uh, this is in the US, normally they have celebrities coming and meeting with the best buddies, which we, I think some of the schools do have uh, the top tennis players actually coming and meeting and training them on, uh, you know, the training especially kids uh, with tennis. We also have, these are the activities as far as now we have conducted. So kids are going to, like, that's a demo, right? We have the prom. We have an annual prom. This is the third year we had it. The regular kids have a prom, but these kids actually, to be very honest, that's the, that's the event that they really look forward for. They just enjoy this event, they wear their tuxedos. If you see, they're all, uh, that is Ro Rohit, the, the guy with the, uh, the, the first, the, uh, the right in the front, he's Rohit. He's the one who has his own car and he drives his own car. And he works in a five-star uh, hotel. And then you see the, the other girl, she's a dancing little kid, and then she's into dancing. So one of my students is training that particular kid in dancing, Bollywood dancing. And she loves doing that. They don't have any inhibitions. So you see how, I have learned a lot of things from them. In fact, I have grown as a person to appreciate life. We start becoming grateful and thankful, knowing that we have so much, so much, we have so much and we don't make use of it. So this has really helped our students to become more reflective. We had a program called as Drumming for a Cause where one of the special kids, her family sponsored the whole event. So we have around 150 people coming for this event. It's not a small event, it's like a big time event. But initially we started it as a small group. And slowly it has grown over the years. For the prom, this year we had 200 kids who came. We had the limo ride which was fully sponsored. We had the facility, the hotel was fully sponsored. So everything was sponsored. Even the gift, the gift pouches of 100 dirhams were sponsored by, one was by Emacs and one more parents sponsored and we got them to give. And we had 75 kids especially who came. Because most of these families, they are not well accepted in the society. So they don't have an outing. So imagine going to a five star for a program is really that that's what they look forward for. So they feel good. So seeing the smile from your face, our students are it's a joy to each one of us. At this party, that's what we look. And recently we had the charity fashion show. In this, the first four kids who walked on the ramp were special need kids. So that was true inclusion. I was very happy when my students said they said that Miss, we wanted to raise funds for the special needs. They said, what about including them on the on the ramp? They said yes, yes, and they trained them actually. They taught them how to walk on the ramp and they had this uh, charity fashion show which was a big success. Then we had the uh, night, to, we call it as the night to remember which is the annual prom. And our future plan is to have, you know, uh, actual sports which is fun sports for these kids. So our kids join together and even having a theatre production and music. Because some of the kids are very, very high functioning kids. Like we have certain autistic uh, Asperger's kid who is in the Guinness Book of Record. So he's in the Guinness Book of Record for um, giving out the capital cities of different countries, I think 53 countries in one minute. 
So he knows that. So you see, and he knows the telephone number. Once you say your telephone number, he remembers. And other things is if you tell your year, date of birth, he knows exactly which day your birth will fall, two years or five years from now. So you see, there are kids, and our kids are really learning from them also, like how to appreciate life. And we had the art sale. So kids who are uh, like especially kids who are good in art, we got the artwork in school. We sold it and we gave back the funds back to them. So that's the way we support them also because some of the special needs kids depend on charity. They don't depend on uh, any other funds, but something that is voluntarily given. Uh, these are some of the activities our students were involved, like in the, which was organized by you know the Down syndrome group and the All for, All for Downs and uh, Autism. Now connecting to our ID learner profile, so we connect this to our curriculum also. It's not just uh, done something outside, but we want to connect it. We want to, as you saw the T, we want to have a meaningful T, a wholesome way of looking at things. So uh, this is what happens. There's the most important thing I think from all the ID learner profile is caring. So they learn to be empathetic, show compassion and respect for the feelings of other people also and uh, making a difference, a positive difference in the other people's lives. And then you see they become open-minded. Earlier we were quite close thinking that we can interact only with people who are so-called normal. That's what we think. But now they have learned and in fact they are very happy to say this is my buddy. So they like to show their buddy to their family members so that they are able to be proud that this was the outing that uh, some, uh, some corporate group had organized for their best buddies. And so even they learn to appreciate, uh, like we learn to appreciate our culture and the other's culture and also value traditions because we have people from different nationalities. It also helps them to communicate. As I already told you, people have learned sign language so that they'll be able to communicate with the skills. So they learn to express their ideas and use language and learn to be respectful listeners also. And they work collaboratively with the families because I've seen a couple of families have become family friends from the special needs and our kids' families also. They also learn to be knowledgeable. They explore the condition of their friend. Like, uh, for example, uh, this kid is very good in, I won't mention the name, but then this kid is very good with uh, drama and singing. So she is having this talent and our kids are able to understand what her physical because her bones are very brittle. So even a little bit of, uh, you know, if the wheelchair goes a little bit tear wire, then her bones get cracked. So that's a very delicate condition she's having. So kids can research into that and what they can do. And so they design and plan activities that have both local and global significance. So singing is something that even kids on wheelchair, recently when we had drumming for a cause, a boy on the wheelchair actually danced on the wheelchair. Like he was able to do some gymnastics with the wheelchair. He put the wheels high up and he was trying to, it was amazing. Like because these kids do have remote control wheelchairs, but it was nice to see how they became a part of the uh, whole fun activity also. They become thinkers, they become reflective thinkers. This was actually just Anathan and Safa Park. And so all those guys who are lying down are all special needs kids. And so they had football also for our kids. So you see how they are able to interact. And uh, some of the friends, like one of the students has gone to MIT in Boston. Even now when he comes back, he meets his buddy. They go out for bowling or they go out for a cup of coffee. They become family friends. So you see, it's not just for community and service to get cash activities or hours. It's also the friendship has gone beyond. In the sense, they become friends with these kids and their families. So I appreciate that. It also helps the kids to be inquirer. That is, they are not familiar with the situation, but they are making that attempt to become familiar so that they would be able to interact and, and be friends with these kids also. Now, is there any question till now? Like, so that I do not know that how many more minutes have I talked so that I will not run over the time. Like, Okay, so we have a few minutes. If you can ask me questions, I could explain to you how, uh, what we do, and I have other things to share, but then I'll go on to it after some time. If there's any question, <laughs> uh, Best Buddies was introduced, I think, in 2004 in the UAE. Yeah, so Mukta, who was working at that time in Nanu Center for Special Needs, was the one who, who gave us the <coughs> introduction, and that's how we started off in the school. 
few students here. Yeah, high school students here, yeah, high school students. So we started off as a small group because some of the kids are very apprehensive. They don't know whether they're able to manage. You know, some kids don't have empathy, so they start laughing when they do certain mannerisms. So we have to be sensitive. I have to train them also. So that's an important factor. So we start off, it's, it's good to start as a small group. You can try up with one particular school like Alnur Center because a lot of people go to Alnur Center. So you can try up with one of the special needs school and see how you can go. There's Spencer's which is a residential school which has orphans also. And I'm really touched with the way they started with no funds. They depend only on well-wishers who give them some funds. So they have kids who have been thrown into the, you know, uh, without, uh, you know, they are being abandoned kids and so that's how they have been able to adopt these kids and work on these kids. So we do visit these centers and try to see where we can even help in volunteering, like help them with certain, you know, helping them to teach the kids. So a lot of work can be done. So there's ample opportunities. Uh, but it's good to start off with a friendship and fun activity and then see how we can make an impact. Any other question that you want, then I'll go to other activities which I do, which is a part of this. Uh, I think the main challenge that we have experienced in the country is because we do have a buddy system in the school, but the main challenge is to give a buddy to a child who is diagnosed with ADHD. Where at times, or most of the time, they are hyperactivity or impulsivity pose some harm to the body. Yeah, in that, yeah, yeah, I don't understand. Even here, the kids who are extremely aggressive, we do not actually associate the body because it's difficult. We need a trained person to handle these kind of kids. So with that condition, we even even the parents of our students will say, no, we do not want them to be body. So that's one of the challenges, which is true. Uh, but then uh, we would, uh, because this is a safe way of only handling kids who are non-aggressive. Because the moment they become aggressive, you need a trained person, a clinical psychologist or a trained therapist to be with them. So all the activities which we have, we include the parents also. Because who will take responsibility of these kids if they come on their own? So we either they send their nanny or their driver or somebody to be with the kids as caretakers and we organize the activities for them. So that's what we do. And we could also, what we do in school, we have assigned two to three students from our school as buddies. For one buddy, we have three students from our school so that in case a bit of aggression, I know some of them can behave in a way that could, you know, then they can have fun and, you know, kids will start teasing each other. That becomes a challenge. I had a situation where kids do that. It's quite common and they say, oh, you know, sometimes the maturity level is not so good. So that could be one of the challenges. Three, yeah, that's what we normally do. Three people with one special need kid so that it's much easier. Because uh, that's the only way, and even kids would feel like a bit uh, secure. But some kids, like uh, some kids, have too many buddies. You know, because they are so popular. Like autistic, uh, sorry, uh, Asperger's and uh, Down syndrome kids are very really popular because they are able to relate very well, and they get more buddies. And the challenge is, you're right. The challenge is for kids who are not so much verbal. They are left with hardly anybody. Everybody says, no, no, I want to be buddy with this guy. You know, he's my friend because he communicates very well. So I have to tell them that, you know, you need to make friends with others also. So we, uh, it is a challenge. You're right, you're exactly right. There is a challenge over there. We face a lot of challenges in that sense. So how do you train these children in this or do you try to make buddies with these others who have challenges? Yes, we do have a we, we do have sessions in the beginning of the year. So the whole uh, maybe three to four weeks, we, we give them some training on how they need to handle this kid so that they'll be able to be sensitive towards the needs of this kid. Also, particularly like ADHD, so you have yeah. to give them characteristics of what. Yeah, that's how true. a particular child will respond with ADHD. Yes, yes. The kids are even asked to do research because it's a part of the community and service program. So they do research also and they are able to relate to the buddy. That's why to be on the safer side, we have two to three students budding with one student. Do you give them a one or even two students? Sorry? Do you give them a certificate to the buddy saying that for the end of the year, end of the year we do give them an appreciation because this is worldwide recognized. Uh, uh, because that helps them even in the university. Yeah. Uh, 
This will help them in the university. Yes. 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 Yeah, we have parental consent, uh, consent even for being a being a part of the best buddies, even for uh, taking a picture. Like if they have to be video video recorded or even taken a picture, we ask permission. It's an informed consent because we want to make sure because even the parents are given uh, there there's a Q and A that the parents are made aware. So we have enough literature to give to the parents so that parents will know what exactly this program is and parents have to sign whether they agree or not. For their kids to be a part of the best buddies. So yeah, you're right. We have to educate. There's, there's a whole. There's a lot of responsibility also. Also, those parents who want their children to participate in this activity. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 For some of them, yes, they will come and ask me one on one. They come and ask me what exactly is this program and what does it entail. Mm -hmm. Will my child mm -hmm. adjust to such kind of a kid? And that's how, you know, because some of the, uh, some of my students do have special needs uh, sibling also, so they are able to be sensitive towards their needs. I I don't think this program is for anybody. Like you will know even from your from your students, like who will fit into this. Yeah, it's not for everybody because yes, you should have compassion, you should have sympathy. So I tell the kids it's because it's their friends join, they say no, even I want to join. After a few months, they fizzle out. There's no commitment. So sorry. Yes, commitment for the whole year. We say the commitment is for the whole academic year. You need to be a part of it. You need to have your, you know, the journaling part of it. You can take pictures. You can make documentation because we need to sign at the end of the term that they have participated in this activity. So to avoid, uh, I mean, to help them and to avoid uh, pitfalls, I also organize outings for the group so that everybody comes together. So it's a big, it's a big thing because 120 to 150 people come in the end. So when I organize food and other things, we have to make sure that everybody is catered to also. So as a deep group outing, it becomes a big deal. But then we have parents who are willing to sponsor the cinema ticket and book the whole cinema for the kids. So it is happening. So there are people who are willing to do this. And I think now people are aware as a society because I think everybody wants to get involved in anything to do with special needs. And this is a very good platform also for the kids. So I really enjoy working and the kids also are uh, involved. In between, yes, some of them fall off. You know, our students, they don't have the commitment, so they do that. So these are some of the challenges uh, I have faced also. But there are good things that has worked, so that's why like, I thought it's good to share what has worked. And also, uh, it's good that you are asking about the challenges which do exist. And even even now, we look for how to reach out to you know to to overcome these pitfalls and challenges. We are looking for solutions also. Any other questions? Because I'll go to the next one just to show that what what other things that we do. That is uh, Prini Matthew. Who's a cancer patient survivor, and she comes and gives a talk to, and we call it as a coffee afternoon for parents. So moms will come there for coffee afternoon, and she gives awareness program on awareness talks on how um, breast cancer can be detected and how it can be treated. And she gives a whole load of information to the parents, and it, every year is coming better. So they even have an Instagram account. So this is how the kids have got involved. So you see, when they get involved, there is, they do so much even without us telling them. So they get involved and they, they, they are able to be leaders also and influence. So they do the publicity in the school, they do the advertising, they, they do a lot of things. And uh, that is how the Pink Week is going on, uh, is uh, over this, um, yeah. And I think, I've, yeah. We also have what is known as Adopted Camp which is uh, uh, giving um, care packages to the labor camp. Also, we have uh, Green Hope. You saw the students sitting at the back. We, we do have tie up with Green Hope also, which is a part of KHTA. They are partners with KHTA. So they come to a school and work on sustainability and uh, recycling and other things. So our students are involved in other activities also. So these are the two programs that I as a counselor run in the school as an after school program. So that's what I thought I'll share with you all which would be probably uh, probably you know of some help or some use to you. Thank you so much.
I hope you like this activity. I didn't want to give more time because I just thought I was losing time. I didn't want to lose time. So if you could just put it into the uh, into the envelope in Pakistan.